My name is George, uh, George Anitsa. I first graduated from uh, Moscow State University, moved here in the UK, uh, studying financial maths and received my scholarship here. Uh, alongside, I was uh, continued to teach maths, Olympiad style maths, um, having my, let's say, Russian uh, maths background and uh, showing and teaching everyone the same style here, but obviously with some uh, scholars adjustments to uh, the UK uh, background. Um, I prepared a little presentation of topics we've covered and different maths competitions we've covered as well. Um, that's just purely, I'd say, five, ten percent of everything we've done and um, Hopefully you'll uh, enjoy um, seeing all these math problems we did with your children. Some good examples. So some good examples of how the whole lesson structure would look like. Uh, it really depends on uh, the topic the lesson we're going to cover. Obviously we have this type of uh, topics um, where we basically want to um, understand the whole concept of, say, the lesson um, in under one hour. Uh, sometimes we can have pure one hour dedicated to the maths competition itself. So in this case, it can be completely different topics. Uh, it can be some mixed problems and uh, basically develops all different areas of mathematics in just one hour. So coming back to the lessons when we have one single topic. A good example is parity. Um, at the beginning of the lesson, I will give a question which is not like, defined yet. So we don't know what parity is, nothing like this. But as you can see, the very first question is about pretty simple. So is it possible to choose five numbers from the set below sum such that the sum of them is exactly 100? Um, usually, People would um, try to do it themselves. Uh, sometimes we'll figure out them. Some, some of them will not figure out this, but that will give you a good foundation to what we're going to do later. So for example, in this case, it's impossible to answer this question purely uh, without understanding of order even numbers. And um, that's a very good interest in some of the students would understand this and have this aha moment and understanding why this is impossible, why this is possible. And that gives a very, very, very good um, way to open the lesson and uh, develop it and start um, doing something a little bit more difficult, such that, for example, at the end, you will understand what's the parity of the results of each operation, because now they know what the parity is. It's just a proper number to be either even or odd. Um, Good example with crypto rooms. Uh, so as you can see, um, just some, some strange questions where numbers are represented by digits and um, students would love to solve this uh, questions and figure out what A is and what B is. And uh, as you can see, this is basically just the very first six questions of the lesson and so, uh, it's for some for some of them it might be a bit difficult for some of them it might be easy but um at the end of the lesson they will be able to solve uh, this type of cryptorins which is much more difficult because at least here we're working with only two digits and one digit numbers giving us the number results and at the end of the lesson it evolves to um you know four yeah the sum of four digit numbers where everything is letters and this is surprising and this is how we can see that the progress um, actually happens during the lesson is when we, you can move and transit from here to here and everyone understands how to do this. Um, geometry is a bit more difficult topic to discuss because it's a, it is not a very common lesson in the UK system, for example, UK educational system. However, I think we all in uh, London School of Mathematics and Program insists of uh, having more and more lessons on geometry since um, this is one of the crucial parts of uh, developing the visualization, developing the ability to 
um, imagine things in your head without actually drawing them. And uh, in the future, that helps a lot uh, in completely different areas, from uh, architecture to um, even drawing. You, you'll see these different properties in theory. Um, yeah, I think this is just a lack of uh, this topic so it gives us a huge advantage of uh, showing very beautiful questions to students. Um, obviously, we will not try to solve all these questions here, but I just want to show you different examples for different age groups. So this is what normally I would give to 11 years old, uh, for, for 11 year. And this one is for a little bit older, since we are starting to working with area here. And here is, yeah, we have area, but it's, uh, Pretty basic. It's very basic, and but but not that let's say simple. Um, even though it's pretty straightforward, asking the area of the uh, square, this black ring here, for example, it's still not as straightforward as calculating the area of uh, just a simple rectangle. So it's kind of like multi steps when we firstly understand what we want to do and after this figure on how to combine these different pieces and um, understand how to solve this type of questions. Um, in combinatorics and uh, no, this is basic questions about different combinations and how we can uh, work with them. Um, once again, there is no one simple approach to do this. However, um, as you can see, we're now find, um, starting to add different uh, graphs and pictures to topics. And um, yeah, this is uh, one of the topics we discussed a lot as well. Um, I think these questions are mainly for year nine, year eight. So they're not difficult, but still very good fundamentals. Um, a little bit um, about mass competitions. So as I said, there are two types of lessons when we either try to crack one huge topic or lesson, or we try to solve as many questions as possible from different math competitions. I know that a lot of my students will be participating, for example, in primary math challenge. So I think they find uh, lessons when we try to understand how to solve primary math challenge past papers very useful to them because next year, this year, like on November and then on February, they participate in this and show pretty good results. I'm always proud of my students that they show, let's say, some gold medals or some uh, silver medals, which are uh, not very common. And so you can check the website. No, that's, that's a very good um, achievement. A little bit more about the style of primary math challenge and how they differ because this challenges are for different age groups. And I think it will give you a good understanding how the lesson will look like when we try to solve um, some past papers. So for example, this is PMC, right? So I chose 9, 10, 11 questions, pretty simple. And um, usually this questions consists of 25 questions. We don't have time to solve all of them, obviously during one hour and to discuss this such that everyone understands that. So you usually try to choose one of the most, say, interesting and difficult questions such that even someone who already sold them um, because some of the students sold past papers themselves still find something more interesting and uh, some new ideas from the lesson. Um, BMC, um, I think one of the most common topics and as soon as, for example, we want to discuss anything, uh, it's very important for everyone not to be, let's say, interrupted by any other questions. So, for example, this is what I would do and uh, ask one of the students to explain a solution. And so uh, they're extremely happy sometimes to annotate and provide the solution themselves like this. And so uh, usually after this, there are a lot of disagreements, agreements, and a very natural, healthy discussion uh, appears uh, after the solution. And I definitely encourage everyone to have discussions about questions because this is when, let's say, actual like thinking and uh, studying happens. Um, okay, 
JMC. JMC are a little bit more difficult. And as you can see, the approach is also different. This one has all multiple choice questions. And that's a little bit, that's much more easier than when you, when you don't know the answers. And so, uh, for example, students can easily understand sort of what the answer is from here. But at the same time, time um, that doesn't help you uh, in your thinking process. When here, for example, it's a little bit more difficult. And instead of, let's say, receiving a lot of different answers, uh, sorry, only five of possible answers here, I receive so many different answers from uh, students in the chat while they're solving this. Uh, so there are lots of more misunderstanding and it's getting a little bit more, much more interesting to teach them this way. Uh, obviously, this is for groups which are a little bit older. Uh, but sometimes, and so uh, like even younger groups might solve one of those questions. Uh, yeah, so there is nothing to worry about when, for example, uh, a year uh, seven solves questions from year 11, because that's usually one of the problems um, which they're definitely able to solve. So this is the full link of uh, maths competitions I used this semester. There will be much more um, in maths competition I will find next semester. Um, a little bit about what I'm planning to do next term. And um, I think after this, that's going to be the end of the presentation. But mainly for the next uh, term, I definitely want to concentrate of, uh, on continuing solving questions we solved from the first term, the topics uh, we all discussed, but with a little bit more difficult, let's say, solutions. Because we already got our foundation, and it would be great to use this solving something ridiculously difficult for them. So instead of having, for example, one or two steps of our solutions, it might be four or five. And so uh, this is something which is not can be achieved only in the, uh, um, in the first semester, but probably will be achieved after those holidays uh, next semester. A uh, little bit new, more topics on uh, geometry, area, volume, and some 3D objects. And uh, definitely a little bit more number theory and algebra, because we're still trying to have much the same curriculum as the school, uh, but with a little bit more say, difficult questions and difficult solutions there, because they will definitely give them a huge advantage in the like, normal curriculum from school. Um, I think this is mainly what we're going to have next semester. Um, thank you so much for listening.